Good evening friends. I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by the Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 31st October 2023. Before entering our discussion, I have two important announcements to make. The first announcement is regarding the Chakra Initiative. See, Shankar IAS Academy is going to start the current affairs classes as Chakra Initiative. Under this initiative, we will provide over 50 plus current affairs sessions and 9 total tests and 5 rapid revision sessions. So, you can make use of this opportunity and boost your preparations. See the brochure for this initiative is given in the description column. Kindly go through it. Now coming to the second initiative, this is regarding the much awaited preliminary test series. See the batch 3 of the Shankar IAS Academy's pre storming is about to begin. The orientation session of this batch 3 will be conducted on 16th November and the first test is on the 16th November. It includes 48 tests including mock and CESA tests. The test will be conducted in both online and offline mode. So, go and register the pre storming test series and boost your prelim score. See, displayed here are news articles which we are going to discuss today. So, without much delay, let us get into the discussion. Have a look at this news article. According to the article, the Securities Appellate Tribunal or SAT set aside the order of the Security Exchange Board of India or SEBI regarding the two eminent businessmen. Mr. Puneet Goenka and Mr. Subhash Chandra. See, the whole episode concerning Mr. Goenka, Mr. Chandra and Z Entertainment is not relevant for our examination. But we can expect a question regarding this important organization which is governing the security market of India that is Security Appellate Tribunal. So, in our discussion today, let us see about SAT. We can distinguish this discussion into two parts. In the first part, we shall see the basics and structures of the SAT. In the second part, we shall see about the functions of this organization. Now, let us get into the discussion. See, the Security Appellate Tribunal is a statutory body. What does it mean? It means this body gets established by an act. So, the SAT is established under the provisions of Section 15K of the Securities and Exchange Board of Act 1992. See, the SAT draws its jurisdiction powers and authority from the SEBI Act. Know that it has the same power as vested in a civil court under the Code of Civil Procedure. Moreover, we should know that the SAT has only one bench which sits at Mumbai. Having seen these basics, let us see the composition of the tribunal. See, the tribunal consists of a presiding officer and two other members. The presiding officer will be appointed by the central government in consultation with the Chief Justice of India or his nominee. Let us come to the qualification of the presiding officer. The presiding officer should be a sitting or retired judge of the Supreme Court or a sitting or retired chief justice of the High Court. Know that the presiding officer can also be a sitting or retired judge of the High Court provided he or she has served seven years of service as a High Court judge. Now let us see the tenure of these officers. See, both the members and the presiding officers have a five year tenure. However, the maximum age of the presiding officer is 68 and the member, the maximum age is 62. Know that the members are eligible for reappointment. But note that the members of the tribunal can be only removed through an order of the central government and this should be based on the grounds of proven misbehavior or incapacity. See, this is all about the structures of this body. With this basics, now let us look into the functions of the body. The first important function is the SAT hears and disposes the appeals against the orders which are passed by the SEBI as we saw in the beginning of the discussion. The second important function is the tribunal hears and disposes the appeal against the order passed by adjudicating authority of the act. The third important function is since 2014 the SAT also hears and disposes the appeals against the order which are passed by Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority or PFRDA and Insurance Regulatory Development Authority or IRDAI. Know this, this is under the PFRDA Act 2013. An important point is a person who is not satisfied with the order of the tribunal can file the second appeal directly to the Supreme Court of India. But remember, this should be filed within 60 days from receiving the order of the SAT. These are all some of the functions of this tribunal. So, this is all about the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the basics of SAT 
we saw about the composition of set and finally we saw about the functions of set revise it often as it will be very important from our principal perspective now with this learned point let us complete the discussion and take up the next article take a look at this front page article this article talks about the susena dispute which you might have studied in the newspaper yesterday the supreme court gave a ruling on this matter it asked the maharashtra assembly speaker to decide upon the disqualification petition filed by chief minister eknath shinde camp by december 31 2023 in this case the disqualification petitions were filed under the 10th schedule of the constitution that is under the anti defection law not only this in recent times there are many issues in the states like karnataka tamil nadu manipur etc see there are various controversies emerged in the recent times about the office of speaker and this constitutional office is under constant controversies in recent times so in this news article discussion let us understand the role of speaker in our parliamentary democracy using our usual mains question come interactive approach now first of all let us see the question in the light of various controversies critically examine the role of speaker in parliamentary democracy this is the question which is asked for 15 markers and you should write answer within 250 words see this question can be asked in the gs paper 2 under the syllabus of parliament and state legislatures structure functioning and conduct of businesses and issues arising out of this now see the question here the key word is critically examine when the term critically examine is given you are expected to examine both the positive and negative sides of the issue and you have to give a balanced conclusion see with this understanding let us approach the question in the introduction part you can mention about the role of speaker in the parliamentary democracy like we can write like this article 93 of the indian constitution mentions about the role of speaker and deputy speaker know that the speaker of the house is not just the presiding officer of the house he acts as the head of the lok sabha and its every representative moreover she or he is the guardian of powers and privileges of the house likewise the speaker being the principal spokesperson of the house his decision is final in all parliamentary matters in these capacities he is vested with the vast varied and vital powers and responsibilities and usually speaker en- enjoys great honor high dignity and supreme authority within the house in this way you can write the introduction guys you could also give a lead to the body of the answer by writing like recently due to the various issues the office of speaker is often criticized in the court media civil society etc which we are going to discuss in our answer likewise you can give a lead to your mains part of the answer okay now you can see the main body of the answer guys you can split the body of the answer into two parts firstly you can mention the role of speaker here you can highlight some of the positive aspects of the speaker role and in the second part you can highlight some of the controversial issues and examine the negatives of the roles this is how we are going to write the body of the answer now we shall start with the first part of the body here you can write like this see speaker is a multifunctional authority with various roles which includes firstly with respect to the order of the house see as per article 95 of the constitution speaker is the presiding officer of the house in this capacity he or she is vested with the powers to maintain order and decorum in the house moreover he or she is the final interpreter of the provisions of constitution rule of procedures of the lok sabha and conduct of business of lok sabha and the parliamentary proceedings by doing all these things speaker ensures a smooth functioning of the house thereby effective law making process secondly the most important role is with respect to the provisions of the bill know that the speaker plays a central role in the law making process he or she can assign the bill to the various parliamentary committees speaker decide on the order in which the bills are to be considered by the house and finally he or she should certify the final text of the bill before they are presented to the president for his assent the second function is as per article 110 of the constitution the speaker decides whether a bill is a money bill or an ordinary bill and his decision is final in this regard thirdly under the representation of the people act 1951 see the speaker decides the question of disqualification of the members of lok sabha 
which is generally arising out of defections under the 10th schedule of the constitution or under the anti defection law in this capacity the speaker playing a lead role in strengthening the democratic process and he also ensures the stability of the government the final important roles are speaker can adjourn the house or suspend the meeting in case there is an absence of quorum actually the quorum is nothing but the one tenth of the total members of the house in doing this he ensures the accountability of the legislatures and make the voice of people heard in the lok sabha the next function speaker is the spokesperson of lok sabha the speaker is often called to represent the lok sabha and to speak behalf of it in various public or international events guys you can write all these point mentioning the role of speaker in ensuring the parliamentary democracy in this way you can write the first part of the body and moving on to the second part of the body as i already said here you can write about the various controversial issues like the speaker is expected to be neutral and unbiased in discharging his or her duties but when the speaker is accused of using his discretion in an arbitrary or biased manner this can lead to the perception of unfairness or lack of transparency in the decision making process to stop this in the kehota holohan versus zazilu and others case 1992 the supreme court held that the speaker must act impartially and without bias while deciding on the disqualification of the member in this judgment only the supreme court said that the decision of the speaker is open to judicial review okay let's move on to the second point secondly the speaker is responsible for deciding on the cases of disqualification of the members this we have already discussed in our analysis but the problem is there have been many instances where the speaker has faced criticism for handling such cases for example in karnataka mla disqualification case in 2019 the supreme court recommended the parliament to amend the constitution and establish a quasi judicial authority to deal with the disqualification practices this decision was suggested by speaker due to the inaction of the speaker of karnataka assembly see also in case of meghachandra case versus the honorable speaker of manipur assembly 2020 case the supreme court suggested to appoint an independent tribunal to substitute the office of speaker in dealing with the disqualification cases okay thirdly we have to see about the misuse of the discretionary powers see in many instances there are cases thirdly with respect to the misuse of discretionary powers lok sabha speaker has the discretionary power in the case of the declaration of a bill as a money bill this discretionary power came under various criticism when the aadhar bill was introduced in lok sabha as a money bill the supreme court under the aadhar case ruled that the judiciary can exercise over the speaker's determination in classifying the bill as a money bill in simple words the speaker's assent or the speaker's decision in the case of money bill is open to judicial review finally in the shivshena case itself even the petition of disqualification has been filed in 2022 but still the speaker of assembly has not decided on the petition this inaction of the speakers and the inordinate delays all are also plaguing the success of the democracy guys you can write all these point in the criticism finally in the conclusion you can end by saying that the effectiveness of the speaker in upholding the principles of parliamentary democracy largely depend upon their commitment to the core values these core values are impartiality integrity and the rule of law see striking a fine balance between the political affiliation and the impartial execution of duties remains a critical challenge in india's parliamentary system so to ensure this the impartiality of the office of speaker is paramount in making a parliamentary democracy a grand success in this way you can complete the conclusion of this question this is all about the question see in our analysis we saw about the introduction we saw about the body of the answer in that we saw about the roles of speaker and the various criticism involved in the office of speaker etc in the conclusion part you should always conclude by striking a fine balance between criticism and suggestions okay with this learned points let us move on to the next news article for discussion look at this news article yesterday as you all know there was a train accident happened in andhra pradesh this accident occurred due to the collision between two passenger trains see the initial report saying that at least 14 people died and more than 50 injured in this horrific accident in this context 
know that in order to avoid such accidents the indigenously developed kawach system or train collision avoidance system has been developed in india but sadly this kawach has not been installed in this stretch where this accident takes place this is about the article so in this context let us see some important points about the kawach system for our prelims perspective see the kawach system is an automatic train protection system atp system which was developed in india no the purpose of this system is to make the train travel safer this indigenous system is developed by the indian railway through research design and standard organization or rdso having seen the basics let us see some important features of this system see the kawach system is the state of art electronic system with the high safety standards to avoid the collision of trains to put it simply it is a set of electronic devices and radio frequency identification devices which are installed in three important stakeholders of railway safety that is they are installed in the trains or locomotives they are installed in the signal system and they are installed in the railway tracks through this they communicate with each other using high radio frequencies to control the brakes of the system if both the trains are happen to be on the same track meanwhile it also alerts the drivers of the trains now all these will happen based on the logic which was already programmed into the system let us see this next important future kawach continuously track the movement information of the train so by doing this it is able to send out triggers when the loco pilot did not adhere to the signal or the loco pilot jumps the signal no this is the grave railway offence with respect to the safety of the train and jumping of signal often leads to the accidents like collision of trains in railway parlance this is technically called signal passed at danger spad now i can give real time example to understand this better let us say you are driving a toy train and you accidentally drive it too fast towards an another toy train which is happened to be on the same track see if the kawach is installed in both the trains it will automatically apply brakes on both trains and it will avoid the collision between the two trains okay let us come back to discussion the third important feature of kawach is in addition to the preventing collision the kawach system also sends emergency messages during the crucial situations so it helps the railway authorities to know when there is an emergency they will take necessary steps accordingly to keep everyone safe let us see fourth important feature the kawach system is also helpful during the foggy conditions when the visibility is usually low in this situation it will activate a hooter or a loud horn like device this will alert the driver when this will alert the train driver when they are approaching at the level crossings so it will help the driver to know where there is a crossing ahead if they cannot see it clearly during the fog conditions in addition to this the kawach system will help address the glitches and vulnerabilities related to various situations this includes vehicles crossing close in level crossings stray cattle or bodles on the tracks railway communication issues in the tunnels etc these are some of the important features of the system now let us see how this system works see the kawach works through a system called traffic collision avoidance system or tcas the system uses equipment on the train and the transmission towers at stations with the radio frequency tags this allows the two way communication between station master and the loco pilot to convey emergency between them the system helps the train drivers know about the signals and permissible speeds in advance through the instrument panel inside the cabin if a train jumps a red signal and the two trains sense up at the same track the kawach system takes over and apply sudden brakes to avoid the collision this is all about the working of this kawach system now finally let us talk about the areas where this kawach has been implemented see the kawach system is implemented in a focused manner the first priority is to install at the high density routes where the trains often run closer to each other the second priority is given to the highly used networks which means the routes that are frequently used by the trains the third priority is given to other passenger high density routes and finally the aim is to cover all the routes overall the kawach system is an important step towards making the train travel safer it helps to prevent the accident by stopping the trains at red signals 
and avoiding the collisions. See, it is being implemented on various routes to ensure the safety of passengers and reduce the chances of accidents. See, this is all about the discussion about Kavach. Let us have a recap about what we saw. In this discussion, we saw about the basics of Kavach system, the futures of Kavach systems, and we also saw about the working of this system. And finally, we saw about the implementation levels of this system. So, with this learned point, let us take up the next article for discussion. Look at this news article. The news is about the recent decision of US government to bring a regulation for artificial intelligence. The article also states that the United States will engage with a number of countries like India, EU, UK, Japan, Australia before framing such regulation. This is about the article. In this context, let us see some points about the artificial intelligence. See, in 2021, the AI market in India accounted for over $7.8 billion. In the coming days, this number is only going to increase. And moreover, AI plays a crucial role in the fourth industrial revolution. So, it's naturally, it is very essential to have a sound knowledge about artificial intelligence. Okay, let us get into discussion. First of all, what do you mean by AI? See, AI or artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines. To put it simply, artificial intelligence involves making machines think and act like humans. See, we are encountering AI everywhere in our daily activities. For example, from bots in online games to complex algorithms that helps us to monitor and predict the weather patterns. This is about the definition of AI. With this understanding, let us see the types of AI. First, we have narrow AI. Narrow AI refers to the AI systems that are trained for narrow set of tasks. These systems are not self-aware. They cannot go beyond the specific tasks other than what they are programmed for. For example, chatbots, image recognition softwares, etc. Secondly, we have general AI. General AI has the ability to understand, learn and apply knowledge across various domains. Actually, they try to mimic the human intelligence. The main difference between narrow AI and general AI is that the narrow AI is not capable of any reasoning or understanding, but general AI can understand the context behind the particular task. For example, chat GPT is the early stage general AI. Currently, lot of research is currently taking place to create a complete general AI. Next, we can also see one important thing called super intelligent AI. See, this kind of AI could potentially outperform the humans in every cognitive tasks. Actually, they might possess abilities beyond human comprehension. Now, this kind of AI is not in practice, but they are mostly portrayed in science fiction movies. For example, 2001, a space odyssey movie is a good example. Here, HAL 9000 is an example of super intelligent AI. See, these are the main types of AI. But AI can also be classified into traditional AI and generative AI. Traditional AI refers to the system designed to respond to a particular set of inputs. Which means, these systems have the capacity to learn from the data and make decisions or prediction based on such data only. Actually, I can put it in a simple way. Imagine you are playing a computer chess game. The computer knows all the rules. It can even predict your moves and make its own strategy based on the predefined knowledge. Actually, here it's not inventing anything new, new way, but selecting from the strategy it was programmed with. That is a traditional AI. Now coming to generative AI, it is a form of AI that can create something new. Actually, it uses algorithms and models to generate new data based on the patterns that it has learned from the existing data. To put it simply, generative AI learn from the existing data then uses that data to create a distinctively new type of data. Okay, I can give you a good example so that you can understand it better. Imagine you are having a big collection of the pictures of dogs. Generative AI would analyze the pictures of dogs 
in a better way and learn what dog generally looks like the characteristics of dogs like colors shapes textures etc it would identify a common features that make dog a dog once the ai has learned all these patterns it can start generating new type of dog images it does this combining different features it has learned from the existing pictures it might create a picture of dog with a body of one dog the fur pattern of other dog and the eye of yet another big dog the ai is essentially creating something new that resembles a dog based on what it has learned in this way generative ai can create new text images music even videos this is how generative ai functions actually some of the examples of generative ai includes chat gpt which can generate realistic and engaging chat conversations dale dali which can create realistic images from the text descriptions adobe firefly can create videos from the text descriptions see these are all various examples of generative ai which are in the developing stages see this is all about our discussion in this discussion we have covered about the basics of ai the various types of ai we saw the differences between traditional ai and generative ai and we also saw some of the examples of generative ai so with this learned points let us take up the next article for discussion look at this news article the science page article talks about the synthesis of new form of carbon structure called carbon nanofluorides know that these particles is called blacker than black particle see the uniqueness of this particle they can observe three frequencies of sunlight and convert it to heat energy with a maximum efficiency of 87 percentage it means they can be coated on the surfaces to heat homes and sterilize the surfaces in hospitals let us see who developed this particle this particle has been developed by the researchers at iit bombay currently they have applied for patent for this particle see this is the crux of the news article given here in this discussion let us quickly go through some of the important points mentioned in the article firstly let us see how they produced the carbon nanofluorides see the researchers heated a special form of silicon dust called dendritic fiber nano silica in a furnace after heating dfns acetylene gas was introduced into the chamber this makes the ivory white silica powder to turn into black color what does it symbolize it symbolizes that there is a sign that carbon had been deposited on the dnfs powder then the black dnfs powder is collected and treated with strong chemicals in this process it will dissolve the dnfs away leaving the carbon particles behind further treatment removes the silica particles leaving behind spherical nanostructure composed of carbon cones see these spherical nanostructures composed of carbon cones are called carbon nanofluorides this is all about the basics of this carbon nanofluorides let us see the properties of it remember the high efficiency of the carbon nanofluorides come from these properties the first property is that the nanofluorides observe three frequencies of sunlight which i have told in the introduction na they are infrared visible light and ultraviolet rays see more than half of the energy of sunlight arrives to earth in the form of infrared radiation so the nanofluoride can observe much more energy from the sun when we compare it with the other materials which are generally used for solar thermal conversion like pv materials photovoltaic materials which is often used in the solar panels the pv materials observe only visible and uv light of the spectrum whereas the cnf observes three frequencies of sunlight thus providing higher efficiency let us see the other properties which are responsible for the high light to heat conversion efficiency of cnf know that these are mainly due to the shape of the material see when the light falls on the material the carbon cones ensure that very little is reflected back instead more light is reflected internally moreover a material that is capable of converting sunlight into heat often runs the risk of losing the heat to the surroundings this is the general law of thermodynamics but the unique design of the cnf does not allow the heat waves to travel long distances this lower the amount of heat which is dissipated to the surroundings so in essence carbon nanofluorides efficiently absorb sunlight and convert it into remarkable degree of heat 
For example, one square meter coating of CNF can vaporize 5 liters of water in just a hour, showing that at least it is 5 times better than the commercial solar stills. Now, talking about their application, as I have already told in the discussion that they can be used for heating homes in regions of low temperatures, sterilizing the surfaces of hospitals, even they can be used in commercial solar stills for water evaporation. That's all about the applications of CNF. In this art news article discussion, we saw about the basics of CNS who developed that. The process by which the CNF is created, we also saw about the properties of CNF and finally we saw about the applications of carbon nanofluorides. So with this learned points, let us move on to the next article for discussion. Look at this news article. This article is taken from the text and context page of the Hindu. This article is talking about the floods in India. Recently, a study was conducted by World Bank on floods in India and the results of the study got published in the journal Nature. The study says that the urban areas of India have been facing floods more and more often. This is destroying several thousands of life and livelihoods in urban India. The study also highlighted that since 1985, human settlements in the flood prone areas of India have more than doubled. The study also found that the middle income countries like India have more urban settlements in the flood prone zone than both low and high income countries. By highlighting this World Bank study, the experts are saying that unsustainable urbanization is the main reason for flood in urban areas of India, such as some of the measures like scientific mapping of the flood prone area, flood resilient housing and sustainable planning etc. See this is the crux of the article. Here why I have discussed in detail means you can take this point and write it in your answer by just quoting the study of the World Bank. This will enrich the credibility of your answer. Ok let's back to discussion. In this discussion let us understand some points about flood then we shall also see about flood prone zones of India. And finally, we can see about steps taken by India to mitigate the floods. Let's start with the floods. Flood is simply defined as the overflow of large amount of water over dry lands. Some of the main causes of flood includes heavy rainfall, rapid melting of snow, coastal storms, overflow of rivers, dam failures, etc. The flood can cause various negative effects to the environment. They include loss of human life damage to the property, infrastructure, crop destruction and livelihood loss, displacement of house and other economic impacts. Now, what does the term urban flooding mean? Since this is the new challenge of India in the wake of rapid urbanization, we have to see the definition of urban flooding. Okay, Urban flooding is defined as the overflow of water in more densely populated or developed areas. As we know, in urban areas, the properties are closely packed. So, the excess water during rainfall does not find the drainage to drain. This in turn causes the flood in urban areas. This is all about urban flooding. Now, let us see the flood prone zones of India. In India, the main reason for the flood is the overflow of river during excessive rains. Apart from this, glacial lake outburst in lakes, dam failures are, are, are also other causes of floods. Now, look at the map here. This map highlights the flood prone zones of India. See here, the states falling within the flood prone zones are West Bengal, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Assam, Bihar, Gujarat, etc. The flood prone zones are closely related to the basin on which they are situated. States like UP, Bihar, West Bengal are falling within the Ganga basin. So, during monsoon, these states are prone to flooding. Similarly, Assam experiences of flooding due to the overflow of Brahmaputra. States like Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan are receiving floods due to the rivers from River Satlaj and Ravi. Gujarat experiences flood due to the overflooding of Narmada, Sabarmadi and Tapi River. Similarly, Odisha faces floods due to the overflow of Mahanadi River. And moreover, Andhra faces floods from both Godavari and Krishna. Finally, Kerala experiences flood due to heavy rainfall in the wake of southwest monsoons. See, we have discussed elaborately about the major flood prone zones of India. 
Now finally, let us see the steps taken by Indian government to mitigate the flood. The first important step is setting up of Central Water Commission. The government of India has set up CWC in 1945. It was primarily set up to achieve the various goals like flood control, management of flood and conservation and utilization of water resources. See, the CWC performs various activities like planning, investigation, management, designing of water resources across the country. These steps help in addressing the floods throughout the country. See, the second important step is the constitution of Brahmaputra Board. See, the government of India had set up Brahmaputra Board in 1982 under Brahmaputra Board Act 1980. Under Brahmaputra Board Act 1980. See now it is functioning under the Ministry of Jal Shakti. The jurisdiction of Brahmaputra covers all North Indian states that fall under Brahmaputra and Barak Basin. See the Brahmaputra board carries various function to mitigate floods in this region. Thirdly, the government constituted Ganga Flood Control Commission in 1972. This commission is involved in the preparation of comprehensive plan for controlling floods in the Ganga Basin. It also monitors various flood management schemes in the Ganga Basin states and the final important step is the setting up of National Disaster Management Authority or NDMA see the government of india has constituted ndma in 2005 under the chairmanship of prime minister of india see the ndma is continuously working in the prevention and mitigation of disasters including flood disasters it is also undertaking a holistic coordinated and prompt response to any disaster in india which also includes floods apart from this the government of india also undertook several structural measures to mitigate floods these measures include construction of dams in the flood prone areas channelization of rivers improvement of river channels and drainages diversion of flood waters etc these measures also help to mitigate the flood across india this is all about the discussion on floods distribution of flood prone zones in india and the steps taken by government that's all about the news discussion with this let us move on to the next part of our discussion that is to discuss the preliminary practice questions today we are having four questions which are relevant to our preliminary examination let us solve them one by one see the first question the securities appellate tribunal does not hear and dispose the appeals against the orders which are passed by which of the following authority that means the question is asking that out of the four organization whose order can't be appealed in sat let us see the options securities and exchange board of india option b irdai third insolvency and bankruptcy board of india and fourth pfrda see from our discussion you can easily understand that the appeals from insolvency and bankruptcy board of india does not fall into this equation so the correct option is option c see the second question how many of the following statements about the kavach system is correct see the first statement it was announced in the budget 2022-23 second statement it is an automatic drain protection system third one it's a indigenous system developed by indian railway through research design and standards organization see all of the three statements regarding the kavach system which are given here are correct so the correct option is option c see the third question how many of the following pairs are correctly matched on the left side you are given generative ais and the right side you are given the applications of it the first one is regarding google bot the application is content generation it is correct see the second one aiva the application is regarding video generation this is wrong see the third one synthesia the application here given is regarding the music generation see from our discussion we saw that synthesia is a video generation ai so this is also wrong see the fourth statement it is copilot the application is code generation this is correct see first and fourth pair are correctly matched so the correct option is option b see the final question of the day the question is carbon nanofluorides sometimes seen in the news is usually refers to see the four options the key word is here is florets which means something related to flowers right so by the common sensical knowledge we can easily decipher that the option b the nanoscale structures resembling the flowers which are made up of carbon is the correct answer 
So here the correct option is option B. See the main question based on today's discussion is listed here. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section. If you like today's video, like, comment and share it with your friends. For more updates regarding the UPC preparation, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy. Thank you for listening to this video. Thank you.